Websites that sell prescription medicines can seem a tempting alternative to visiting a GP, especially if you're having problems getting a suitable doctor's appointment. But there's a warning. These online services are putting patients at risk. That's according to the health regulator in England, the Care Quality Commission. Well, Dr. Fair Kirkland, a GP and broadcaster, is going to be joining us uh, on the sofa in a couple of minutes. But first, let's see her investigation into these sites. You could just visit treated.com. Ah. At treated.com, all Dan has to do. 283 different drugs available for 77 medical problems. No examination needed, just an online form that gets reviewed by one of their doctors and prescription medication delivered to your door within 24 hours. What the site doesn't tell you is that this company was suspended by the CQC in December last year. Treated.com's headquarters are behind me here in Bolton. Now, last year, as part of an investigation, we went on their website and ordered antibiotics. We posed as a man and said we'd had ear pain for just a couple of days. But halfway through the form, they started asking us questions about being a woman. Now, this raises significant concerns about identity checks. Then they sent this medication through the post to treat the ear pain. As a GP, I can tell you I have never given it for this condition as it simply wouldn't work. That drug wouldn't have killed the bugs that typically cause ear infections. This finding worried the CQC, the watchdog for online prescribing services. As a result, they inspected HR Healthcare, who run Treated.com, and another online provider, MD Direct. The reports published today highlight concerns with both firms over safety, inappropriate prescriptions and the qualifications of clinicians. HR Healthcare told us they're now working to improve their processes and the error with the medication we received was due to a system glitch. Following inspection, MD Direct voluntarily cancelled its registration. The CQC has so far inspected a quarter of the companies registered in England. We've now inspected 11 of these providers. The first two reports are published today and they are shocking. Look, I really understand the difficulties the public have because the websites look uh, incredibly professional, but um, the registration with the Care Quality Commission is really important and we are now inspecting all of those um, sites. And there's another concern, the sale of antibiotics on these sites. Because as bacteria become resistant, standard treatments become ineffective. This is a particular worry to Lord O'Neill, who led the government's review on how and when antibiotics are used. We need to stop treating antibiotics as over sweets, and we need to be a lot tougher and disciplined about how they're being used. Our review showed that if we carry on down the same path around the world, in another 30 odd years, 10 million people a year will be dying. So this is one of many steps that are needed and I really welcome what you've done. For the first time, the CQC has published a clear set of standards for these online providers. For example, they must verify patients match their photo ID, such as through a Skype check, get a comprehensive medical history and seek permission to contact a patient's GP. The CQC will have inspected all online services in England by the end of this year. But until then, the message is clear. It's better to buy with caution. Dr. Fair Kirkland there, who uh, joins us now as well. Morning, thanks Morning. for joining us. Um, I mean, you can understand why people buy them online, as you showed there. It's really easy and it can be easy to make mistakes and easy to be duped into getting something that is not right for you. Are there a lot of people doing this, do you think? Well, to be honest, no one really knows. I did ask the Care Quality Commission and there's no accurate number on the people who are using these sites. When they inspected one of the um, online sites, it was around 3,000 people who used one of the websites we just talked about in the last 12 months. Now, that actually was a lot of patients because there's only one doctor prescribing for that site. But across the whole of the UK, no one really knows. So you're a GP, aren't you? That's your day job. In that situation, when you see someone, obviously you have a dialogue. You literally look at them and yep. you'll know about the history, you'll ask them questions. Just talk us through the risks attached to separating out this process. 
Well, if patients aren't being examined properly, you could end up giving someone completely the wrong medication. If you don't know their medical history, so you haven't got access to their GP notes, you could actually give something that would then interact with their normal drugs. So that could potentially be really serious, if potentially not fatal. There's also concerns if people are using these sites and they're going on back multiple times, do so the sites pick that up? So, for example, one of the sites um, gave repeated prescriptions for urine infections. Now, as a GP, I know that might be a sign of something like a cancer. So there's real concerns for patients that they might be at significant risk. Is there any um, like advice you have then for people in yeah. terms of what they should do if they're, you know, if they are struggling to get an appointment with their GP and they, you know, they're doing a bit of research online? Well, the Care Quality Commission today has produced guidance for patients. They say they should look at where the website is registered. Is it in the UK? Is it abroad? Is it in England? And if it is in England, are they registered with the Care Quality Commission? And then you can do some other checks to see if you know the GP who, or the doctor who's actually prescribing it and check that they're registered with the General Medical Council and expect to be asked for photo ID. That's really important. Yeah, Dr. Googling, thank you very much for your time this morning. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, it's just coming up to 27 minutes past seven. Time now to get the news, travel and weather where you are this morning.